Yo guys, how's it going? IK Model here. Today we're going to be finishing up this bike. So, here's everything we have left. We have to do the brakes, smaller parts over there, we have the exhaust radiators and all the plastics left, and we also have to go through and tighten down the rear and all that good stuff. So, uh, yeah, let's get right to this. So, in the last video, we got the wheels on there, the engine mounted up, all good to go, rear suspension, front suspension, and the bars, as well as the electronics sitting right there. So, next let's get to the radiators. All right guys, now we're gonna install the right radiator here. We got some fresh mounting hardware. Here, I'm just gonna make sure all the hoses are ready properly. All right guys, now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down all these bolts with the quarter inch ratchet. These bolts really don't need to be too tight and uh, don't want to over torque these. Good. 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 And then of course this is rubber mounted so it's gonna have a little bit of flex to it, that is completely normal. And uh, yeah, there we go, our radiator's on. I'm good to go. So next we're gonna install the left radiator here. I've already fitted up the radiator hoses so we could just pop those in. Now I'm gonna bolt it up with our fresh bolts. All right, now I'm gonna install the rest of our radiator hoses here. Connect that to the head. And connect this one to the radiator. There we go. All right guys, now we're gonna install our radiator louvers here. And you'll notice on these bolts, I had to double washer them. That's just because this aftermarket louver actually has shorter threads. So we actually have to double washer these in order for the bolt to actually clamp down. Kinda sucks, but okay, you know what, that's what we have to do. So far, I'm super, super impressed by what I see, guys. This bike is coming together really well, and I love the look of those blue hubs. Those look so trick. Plus that shock spring. Looks super, super cool. So today, we have to install all of our brakes. A lot of little parts like our shifter, brake pedal, whatnot, chain guide. Uh, we have our exhaust system, skid plate, and then we need all of our levers, of course. And then we have all the body panels and seat over here to install. Now before we get to work on any of that stuff, I need to address a little issue I found here. So as you can see, if I move the sprocket, it'll actually hit on our chain slider here. So I need to go ahead and remove the chain slider and see if we can grind down that a little bit. But uh, other than that, it fits great. But yeah, we need to see if we can do anything about that. All right guys, what I ended up having to do was I ended up having to uh, disconnect the lower shock and take out the swing arm pivot so I can move it back a little bit. Yeah. Screwdrivers are sitting there to hold it all in place, but uh, yeah, we got the got the slider out right here So now I'm just gonna go through on our grinder and see if these wheels can uh, eat up a little bit of the plastic
All right guys, so we got our chain slider all dialed in and good to go. It is clearing perfectly fine now. So now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to installing our chain and some of the chain components. So here we have our chain guide, our chain, and then we have a chain roller we still need to install. All right guys, so here I'm gonna install the bolt. Then we have a washer. Then we have our chain roller. Then we have a locking nut that has a little nylon sleeve that'll just prevent it from going loose. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and install our chain guide, which I shined up, and we have a new plastic answer, HRBs. So let's install that. All right, so we have all of our chain components installed. Now let's go ahead and install our chain. So here I have a primary drive 520MX chain. As you guys can see, it's gold. And it came with a lot of grease from the factory, so that's definitely a good thing. All right guys, now we have our chain installed. Let's go ahead and install our master link. All right, now we're gonna install our clip facing this way. You don't wanna have it facing this way, otherwise a rock could bounce up and knock it off and nobody wants that. Now I'm just gonna use some needle nose pliers to get that clip in place. There we go. And there we go, we have installed our chain. All right guys, so we have our chain all installed and so far I'm pretty happy with this primary drive chain. It looks like a great quality chain. It says it's made in Japan right on the chain and it comes with a lot of grease just slabbered onto the chain from the factory so that is a very good sign. Now that we have our chain installed, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the brakes. All right guys, so for the brakes here, I'm gonna be starting by installing our rear master cylinder and here I have some fresh hardware with some Loctite on it so we don't lose our master cylinder in the middle of a race. Now I'm just gonna snug these bolts down. All right, that's good. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and fit up our new brake line. And our new brake line here by Tusk comes with some fresh banjo bolts and crush washers, so we will be using those. Here I'm just gonna temporarily snug down the banjo bolt, not gonna torque that down yet. And here up top, I'm just gonna twist the brake line around. This is how it's supposed to be ran. And then screw it into the master cylinder just like that. All right, now that we have everything installed, I'm gonna go ahead and torque our banjo bolts down at 22 foot-pounds. Next, we're gonna install our caliper guard, and this is actually a work connection guard that I bought a little while ago, and I just shined it up with the Prime MX cleaning pads to make it nice and shiny again. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, so next we're gonna install our brake pedal here. So here we're just gonna insert it into the brake clevis, slide the pin through. There we go. And here we have a washer, then a little cotter pin to lock it all in place. Now we're going to mount up the brake pedal itself here. So I'm just going to put the spring here onto the frame. Then get the spring onto the brake pedal. Here I'm just going to get a little bit of grease inside of our brake pedal pivot here. Now I'm going to install the pivot bolt which I absolutely loaded up with grease. Here I'm just going to clean it off a little bit so we can get a Allen wrench in there. Now I'm just going to screw this in. There it's going to spit out some of the extra grease. I'll just wipe that down. Here we're going to tighten down the bolt. There we go. And you guys probably won't be able to see this, but there's a small cotter pin. I'm just going to slide it into place behind the bolt here. And there we go, our brake pedal is all installed. So moving on to the front brake here, I'm just going to start by sliding our master cylinder here onto the bar. And I'm not going to keep it in this position, but I just want it to be nice and level so we can bleed it easily. All right, now we're going to install our front brake caliper here. We just got to slide it onto the brake rotor. Line it up with our mounting holes. Now I'm going to torque these two bolts down to 20 foot-pounds. Now we're going to connect our brake line and banjo bolt to our front brake master cylinder here. Now I'm going to torque this bolt down to 22 foot-pounds. And now I'm going to go ahead and torque down the lower banjo bolt to 22 foot-pounds as well. And finally I will be installing the brake line clamp here. Just hold the front brake in place and connect to the fork guard. And here for these bolts I'm just going to snug them down with a quarter inch ratchet. Oops, sorry guys, almost forgot to install our brake line guide here. So, as you guys can see, this is not your average everyday brake line guide. This is a brake line guide by 3DP Moto, and they basically 3D print a lot of cool dirt bike parts and they can make them custom made personalized to you and as you guys can see I have AK Moto and A21 written on mine and you can get pretty much anything written on them and uh, yeah they're pretty cool 3d printed and come in a lot of different colors and finishes so I'll leave a link to their website in the description below so definitely make sure you guys check them out and again huge shout out to them for hooking us up with some pretty check pieces next we're gonna install our throttle here just gotta put on the rubber cover our throttle and here, because I am running a Pro Taper built throttle tube and it has a bearing in the end of it, I need to give this throttle tube a few taps so that bearing can see it in the end of the bar and uh, won't slide back and forth. There we go, bearing seated, super smooth.
Now I'm going to take off this cover and feed in the throttle cable into the housing. All right, now I'm gonna reinstall our cover. And these screws really don't need to be that tight because they are covered by a cover, so we'll just snug these down. Now I'm just gonna adjust the free plate here. I like just a tad, tad bit of free plate. Not too much, but just a little bit. All right guys, and uh, I kind of wasn't paying attention here and I forgot to put my throttle cable through my cover here, so it looks like we're gonna have to take this back off. But I will make you guys sit through this. I'll go ahead and get this all fixed up and then we'll move on to our clutch. Here before I install the clutch perch, I'm gonna install our kill switch. Now for our clutch perch here, you're gonna install this little plastic sleeve that allows it to rotate. Now we're gonna install our rotator clamp, then our bolts, which these bolts are actually titanium. Uh, these are the only titanium bolts I have on the bike, but uh, yeah, when I bought this perch, I got the little tie bolt kit, so those are pretty lightweight and uh, pretty cool little pieces. Now I'm just gonna slide in my clutch cable here into our perch and lever. And there we go. Then of course we have to adjust it. So we have all of our controls on and good to go. My brake lever is still mocked up here because I'm going to be bleeding that system later. But uh, everything else is all good to go. Uh, ran the kill switch wire, got that all fastened down with these Yamaha ties here. And I really love these little zip tie things that Yamaha has because they're actually reusable. They have a little tab so you can reuse them over and over. I think that's really cool. So now that we've finished a lot of the front end of the bike, now I'm going to move on to the subframe. All right guys, now I'm gonna torque this upper subframe bolt to 23 foot-pounds. And the lower bolts will be torqued to 21 foot-pounds. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and throw on the exhaust.
Alright guys, so I pretty much have everything on the bike besides all the body panels and the seat. Now there are a few things that need to go on the bike with the bike off of the stand. So our shifter here and our skid plate. But other than that, we're all ready to start fitting up some body panels. So let's get right to it. Guys, this bike is turning out so, so sick. Every piece I put on is just looking so much cooler. So first let's go ahead and install our gas tank. Next, I'm going to install the front fender. Next, I'm going to install my front number plate. Next, I'm gonna throw on our rear fender. All right guys, now we're gonna throw on our seat. Yeah guys, this seat looks super clean on here guys. I love the white accents. I think it fits these graphics so much better. Dang, that looks sick. That is so clean. Alright guys, we are all done here in this bike. Guys, it turned out so sick. All this time, effort, just so much, so much effort, so much time has gone into this bike. It is so nice to see it. All nice and clean, shiny hardware, everything looks so sick. Guys, this is so cool. Those blue hubs too, I just can't get over those guys. I never thought I'd have a bike with like blue hubs or anything that cool, but this is freaking awesome. Now as you guys can see I haven't put on my frame guards over there. I kind of like the raw frame look so I might keep that for a little while, I don't know. And I still do have to throw on my skid plate and my shifter but yeah guys I am so pumped with how this bike has turned out. And uh, yeah this seat cover looks really sick with the black and white. Complements the black and white and blue graphics so so well guys. This is, <laughs> this is just so cool guys. And then the front number plate the way it goes white and then a white bar pad just flows. So we still have to put fluids and whatnot in the bike. So we have to put our brake fluid. Uh, we have to put transmission oil in. We have to put gas, coolant, all that good stuff. But yeah, guys, I am super pumped. This thing turned out so, so, so clean. This is so cool. And just to know that everything's all fresh, all the bearings are greased, the silence is repacked, all that's just all good, fresh. It's just so, so cool. 
All right, guys, so I have the skid plate and shifter on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the bike with coolant. Now, instead of coolant, this first time, I'm gonna be filling her up with some distilled water just so I can flush out the system. All right guys, now I'm gonna fill the rear brake lines with some brake fluid using a reverse bleeder tool I made. So here I'm just gonna attach this hose, which is actually a little bit of coolant overflow line. The bleed nipple here. Just like that. We'll get this little tiny clamp. Just throw it on there. Now we'll get to filling up our brake system after all the bubbles leave our tube here. All right guys, so we got the rear brakes all bled and all those are holding pressure just fine. And I ended up having to crack the banjo, the banjo bolts loose in order to get a little bit of air out. But uh, yeah, the rear brake is now all bled. Now I'm gonna be moving on to the front brake. Oh, 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 oh.